Hello friends, welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights, Hong Kong's new insightful program looking into the lives of our most remarkable high achievers and getting their take on the city's past, present and future. Our guests will give their personal perspectives for a new generation, inspiring Hong Kong for a better society. So sit back and relax and we'll take you Beyond the Spotlights. Welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights, where we invite leading minds and game changers with incomparable experience and unique knowledge to come on our light-hearted yet informative show to help business leaders and the wider community gain insights, grasp opportunities, and see behind and beyond spotlights so we can get the full picture, dream bigger, and achieve more together. I'm your host for this episode. My name is Nick Chen, lawyer and lawmaker. And Friday Beyond Spotlights is honoured and pleased to present to you our guest today, Ms. Suhanya Rafael, Museum Director of M Plus. And we are here today at M Plus, Asia's first global museum of contemporary visual culture in the West Kowloon Cultural District of Hong Kong. Suhanya, welcome onto the show. Thank you. Wonderful to be here. Some people used to say uh, Hong Kong is a bit of a desert for uh, musicals or some other art form. Um, but with you coming to Hong Kong, with what M Plus is doing, uh, do you see a you know, leap, a, a new um, attraction for the people living here and people coming here uh, to enjoy Hong Kong as a hub for arts and cultural exchange? There's no question that Hong Kong has really grown exponentially when it comes to cultural activity across the various disciplines, whether it's in the performing arts sector or in museum sector or even the art market. And when we used to be um, not figuring at all in that space, we now are a major contender. In fact, the art market is one of the strongest compared to New York or London. And now for the first time, we have an institution that is equal to the major institutions in Europe and North America, the UK. Mm. We're looking at historical objects, aesthetic histories, design architecture histories. As a museum of visual culture, we expand these many disciplines inside the museum's ambitions of collection and exhibition and learning programs. So Hong Kong is not a cultural desert. Hong Kong is the international art hub where East meets West. Our multiculturalism provides a uniquely inclusive and welcoming environment where Chinese, Asian and international private collectors, uh, international art hoarders and art investors come from all over the world. What are some of the key fundamentals in your view, Yvette? Hong Kong is a microcosm of the global art scene as well as a cosmopolitan city. Art lovers love the art exhibitions here and probably also appreciate the strong copyright laws, free flow of capital, free port with zero import-export duty, and no capital gains tax. We also have a well-established logistics and a strong international network of art connoisseurs. Can I ask about the name of the museum? Um, why is it not called the uh, Museum of Modern Art? We are called M+, mm. a lovely mysterious word <laughs> really, yes. or emblem. And it really stands for museum and more. People wanted four different kinds of museums. A museum for ink art, a museum for design, mm -hmm. a museum for moving image, and a museum for visual art. Let's talk about the sharing passion for art uh, and also business mm -hmm. of art. Do you welcome that? Yeah, so we are a museum. So we have significant collections of contemporary and modern visual culture mm -hmm. dating from the mid 20th century and into the future. Mm -hmm first global institution of its kind and the first of its kind in Asia because there's no institution that brings in those cross-disciplinary interests yes. in a collection sense in Asia. So as a museum living with contemporary material, we are continually negotiating intellectual property with the holders of, the, of that property. So oh, the moral point. rights mm. are something we have to always discuss and negotiate ownership around. So part of an acquisition of mm. anything includes a discussion around where 
intellectual property rights risks and for what purpose? As an institution that is education focused as well, we get the intellectual property rights in a, in a much more broader sense than mm -hmm. in a commercial sense. But we do work very closely on these uh, contracts to make sure that we can go out in the most appropriate way. Usually the copyright protection is life of author plus 50 years and you're dealing with modern arts, um, contemporary arts and uh, visual culture. So in that sense, often the copyright still is with you know, the author. So we, we respect that. Mm. So we have to negotiate it when um, we move forward with any kind of publishing, mm -hmm. including merchandising. Mm. And we have a museum shop. And in the best form of great museum retail, we work very closely with makers to do new expressions of existing objects, for example, as limited editions for people to acquire and buy. It's a, very, um, it's a very exciting part of museum work, is the retail part. Mm -hmm. And of course, the intellectual property is something we, we negotiate and it's built into that transaction. Um, the government's been very supportive of uh, building this West Kowloon Cultural District uh, and including setting aside over, what, 20 billion? Yes, so we have just over a billion of that for collection development and mm -hmm. that was established right at the beginning with the establishment of the district. Mm. Um, we have spent just over half of that in the acquisition of our collections, which are now substantial, or, or just almost um, 8,000 objects and 50,000 archives. So it's a founding collection of substance, but still a way to go. But I would also say that we have many, many uh, collectors and artists and creatives who gift to the collection and no major institution can function without that relationship of gifting. These days, some of the digital art could sell for hundreds of millions, um, and they are selling it with the technology called non-fungible token, using blockchain. Does the museum plan to buy any digital art that are minted with NFT? We are certainly very interested in it. We have as part of our design and architecture curatorial department, a curator who is particularly exploring what it means in the digital world to manage this um, transaction, which is uh, very ephemeral. We are on the cutting edge in this part of the world of developing that. And the NFT world is part of that inter interaction. Mm. And we are right now exploring how we will interact with it. Whether we're able to accept a work that is NFT, in theory, absolutely. In practice, it needs to really um, address our acquisition policies, which are around particular kind of historical um, and collection interests. What do you see are the unique characteristics of Hong Kong that makes it uniquely the right place uh, to do art and cultural exchange? and to build a um, art trading hub. I think there are many things to say that's unique about Hong Kong in that sense, mm. but it is a city that has always been open to art, uh, to art but also ideas and the movement of, of things, and it's a, it's a trading hub. Mm. And that sits as part of the art and culture space. We have an incredible market that's already well, estab well is establishing itself, mm. and an um, incredible collector base as well. It's free pot for most things, for arts as well? Yes, it is. And I think that's very, very important part of ensuring that we continue to hold that, that leadership place. Mm. I think also we are a fulcrum where so many people come and go in and out of Hong Kong, pre-pandemic of course, and we're mm -hmm. waiting now for the pandemic to to blow out, mm -hmm. um, which, which will happen, of course, inevitably. Mm -hmm. And I think that location of Hong Kong, you know, where it sits geographically is also really interesting. It's part of the Greater Bay. It's an amazing crucible for so much to happen. Art means different things to different people. To me, it could be an application of creative skill and imagination, expression of inner self, expression of feelings, and sometimes to explain and share an ideology, or a philosophy, or a religion, or even to create a brand to help someone market their products or express their feelings. 
For me, I think of it as an asset class. Hong Kong already sits at second place and inching forward in the ranking of top Asian cities by total sales value, with over 5,000 lots sold worth more than 1 billion US dollars. It's next only to Beijing, which has more than 10,000 lots sold at over 1.8 billion US dollars. They're followed by Shanghai and Tokyo, according to one report. And according to another report, Sotheby's clients in the region accounted for 30% of the auction house's worldwide sales. And Christie's reported that Asian buying accounted for 34% of its global auction sales. I'd like to ask you to share a few words of wisdom uh, to equip our younger generation of people, of artists. Could you share a few words? Passion focus, self-belief, and just do it. Thank you, Suhanya. And uh, we'll be back after the break. <laughs>